Welcome to Five Reasons Sports Network. I'm Martin Bader. I'm here with Katie Wu, MLB.com's minor league baseball writer, one actually of the up and coming baseball writers in the business that really is the voice of minor league baseball for a, for a lot of people. And we're here to talk to her about the state of minor league baseball because in Florida, for example, there's not going to be minor league baseball for the first time since 1907. So, Katie, what does that mean for people that maybe say, uh, as long as Major League Baseball is back, that's all I care about? Well, Martina, well, Martina. it's really not good. Uh, obviously, the cancellation of Minor League Baseball hasn't happened in over a century, like you said. Um, and it's just, unfortunately, a, a situation of the pandemic. I, I feel like Minor League Baseball as a whole did not feel like it was feasible or practical to to be able to host games and put on these contests. And um, it's really unfortunate when you think about how many people are affected, but we'll start, I guess, with, with the players who are going to be impacted the most, you know, there's a small fraction of players that were brought up to their respective team 60 player pool. And that's fantastic news for them. That's mostly top prospects or uh, first or second round draft picks that will get a chance to kind of develop with the big league squad. But for the overwhelming majority of minor leaguers, um, they're kind of stuck in a hard place because there isn't really a, a place for them to go. Um, they're, they don't know if they're going to get a paycheck. Most of them are on a month-by-month -month basis on if they're going to receive a stipend. Uh, there's not really a league or anything else that they can go to to continue their development, and they're all kind of stuck. Um, definitely not an ideal situation for, for anybody involved, but I really feel for those minor league players who are going to be so severely impacted in such a pivotal time in their player development. And you mentioned that it's the first and second round draft picks that mostly are getting the chance to be in that 60 player pool or the prospects that were on the verge of making it to the majors. But look, Jacob de Grom was an eighth round draft pick. Uh, Goldschmidt was a late, a late round draft pick too. There's a lot of star players that came in the later rounds and maybe are not being seen right now. And maybe they just lost their shot forever because of the pandemic. I can't imagine someone telling you, hey, Forget about your dream forever. Now go do something else. How do you f think they feel right now? Exactly. You make such a good point there. And it, it really is such a sad situation with everything going on in what has been such a whirlwind 2020. I can't help but start feeling for these guys that put their entire lives into getting where they are now. And the minor leagues is no easy place to be. Um, the minor leagues are probably kind of one of the most, uh, I don't know, maybe toughest or hardest places to be in when you're working in your professional sports because it's so demanding it's so daunting and now these players are ultimately having to choose between following their dream in their career or having to step away from the game and what they love so much because they need to make money because they need to support themselves um, and there's no kind of everything is kind of up in the air for 2021 from a minor league standpoint and these guys really have no answers ultimately it's going to come down to what player has the flexibility or the feasibility to continue playing and what players are going to have to step away from the game because they need to support themselves or their families. And it's just, it's really just an unfair situation for everybody, especially these guys that have sacrificed everything to get to where they're at today. And we're also talking about sustaining baseball's profitability and popularity. In fact, I talked about how soccer could surpass baseball in popularity if baseball isn't careful uh, the other day. And, you know, baseball popularity is not just about the 40,000 fans that go to a game in St. Louis or in San Diego. It's about the fans in uh, Bradenton, in St. Lucie, in Fort Myers that that you know they they feel for their minor league teams and they don't go and they don't go really to see who wins and who loses it's just a family experience and that, but that contributes also to the major league product because the kids that live there are maybe four or five hours away from a marlins or a race ballpark they win baseball from early on with their minor league teams Exactly. I mean, those are all excellent points. Um, I think what, what minor league baseball really prides itself on, or at least what I've learned from working there for the past year and a half, is that these MILB games are, they pretty much embody everything that um, baseball represents. You know, it's cheap family fun entertainment. They have crazy giveaways. They have, you know, crazy ticket deals. I mean, where can you go where you can get a dollar hot dog and a dollar beer all game long? Um, so minor league baseball is truly kind of like what, I guess, sparks the growth of the sport both for players and for fans you know the collective vibe around milb is that when minor league baseball returns which it will 
we'll have like a stronger community collective approach for it and we'll appreciate more than we ever did. And I really do believe that. Um, unfortunately, I also believe that it will look uh, vastly different from the minor leagues that we're used to. I mean, Florida is home to the Florida State League, multiple minor league teams. And the sad reality is that over half of these minor league teams, over half of the 160 teams that minor league baseball boasts, they're all going to need some sort of financial support and some might even have to sell or fold completely. Um, there is just no way for these teams that rely on ticket sales and attendance and, uh, you know, sponsorships when there's no season, those all go away and they're essentially just trying to, to stay afloat. Um, and it really is just a sad situation because like you mentioned, this is where minor league baseball is where people go to, to embrace the sport and to get to know it and to see the people that the stars, they know before they're stars, all of that. Um, it's just a really sad situation all around. And uh, I, I feel for those teams and I feel for the team employees. And I most importantly, I feel for the fans that are affected by this as well. Uh, you know, it's we talked a lot about the doom and gloom in the first five minutes of this interview. Let's step away from that a little bit. And exactly. tell me, what's the craziest thing you have ever seen in a minor league ballpark that you will never see in a major league one? Oh, man. Um You know, if you want to see crazy, I suggest going um, across the country to the West Coast, the Pacific Coast League, which is home to about 16 AAA teams, uh, never fails to drive me crazy. And I mean that in the nicest way. Um, you will find guys that have hit multiple cycles in the same game. You'll find guys that have hit four home runs in a game. Um, I have watched PCL scores uh, look more like football scores at the end of the day. Um, So while I can't think of any like one particular thing, I, I think the craziest thing about minor league baseball is that you never know what you're going to see. Um, you can say that about major league baseball too, but if you go to any minor league game, the probability of you seeing something completely weird or completely unorthodox or just completely so far from, from normal baseball, as we would say, is so high. Um, if you've never been to a minor league baseball game, when you get the chance, please go. It will be one of the just weirdest baseball experiences of your life, but it'll be weird in all the good ways. Well, as you know, actually, Hamilton came out for everyone to see on Friday. So it got me thinking, uh, which pitching duo, obviously not to the death, we're not in that kind of thing, but which pitching duo would you pay to see the most this year? Oh, man. Um, I can go, well, what way would you rather have me go? Would you rather have me go uh, like established big league guys or up and coming minor league prospects that could make their team or both? What, what would you like? Let's go both, but first the major the, the major league one. Where Let's say the, the game seven of the World Series and you could set up these two pitchers to have the ultimate duo. Uh, I'm going to go with Max Scherzer and uh, Garrett Cole, which I think is what's going to be the opening day uh, the opening day matchup if the schedule comes out the way that it, it was uh, reported to. But that's one that I would pay to see right now. Um, two of the best pitchers in the game, uh, two of the best competitors. And uh, But to be honest, I'd watch any kind of baseball right now, even if it was Little League. That's how uh, starved I am for some sort of life sports. But I think if we're going from a, a prospect perspective, uh, we talked about Jesus Lizardo a little bit. I would definitely like to see him take on uh, the Padres' top pitching prospect, and that's the top pitching prospect in baseball and Mackenzie Gore. I think those are two of the future faces of the game, and to see them compete against each other would be uh, almost as exciting as Scherzer and Cole. Well, Katie, I appreciate you being on with us a lot. You can find Katie's content on MLB.com, and also they can follow you on Twitter. What's your handle? My Twitter handle is at KDJWu. Last name is spelled W-O-O. -O. Pretty easy to remember. Uh, Martin, thank you so much for having me. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy, and hopefully I can see you at a ballpark soon. Absolutely. And if you come to the East Coast, then we'll have a big ass snow cone at a minor league ballpark somewhere and just watch the craziest baseball, the most beautiful baseball there is to, to see. I could not picture anything that I would like better more.